Do you then uh, attack next the state laws against such an marriage? Well, I haven't planned a particular attack on that, but I don't think America will ever come to its full maturity until every state does away with laws prohibiting individuals to marry on the basis of race. But I think basically this is an irrational fear because it is an individual matter. And I think the question here at bottom is a question of illicit miscegenation. And if you will follow the record there, I think you will discover that illicit miscegenation has existed more in the South where you have had rigid segregation laws than it has existed in the, so in the North where you don't have such barriers. It hadn't been the Negro who was the aggressor at this point. Uh, if we, we just need to look around and we can see that. Mr. Spivak. Uh, Dr. King, you say that the Negroes have a moral right to occupy the restaurant seats. Now, you've had a Supreme Court uh, edict uh, on the school integration. Would you say that uh, your children, the Negro children, have a right to occupy the seats in classrooms too? And would you consider that form of nonviolence? Well, I'm sure that Negroes uh, have this uh, right on the basis of the Supreme Court uh, to go into schools. I haven't uh, gone into, I haven't thought through the strategy at this point, how nonviolence, uh, how nonviolent resistance can apply in the school integration struggle. Uh, I do think it can apply, and I think uh, we need to think through some of these methods. The main thing is that the methods must always be nonviolent, and uh, they must always uh, be based on the principle of love. But the specific application, I'm not prepared to say at this time. I do know that we have that right on the basis of the decision from the Supreme Court. Wouldn't you be on better ground, both legal and moral, if you occupied school seats than by occupying a few restaurant seats? I'm not sure about that, Mr. Spivak, because I think we uh, have an economic factor involved here. And even if one denied the legal aspect, uh, the legal right to do it, that is a deeper moral right. Uh, as Governor Collins of Florida said, it is a blatant injustice to welcome individuals into a store at all other counters but the eating counter. This is a blatant injustice, and it is very unfair, so that we have not only legal rights involved here, but also moral rights. But wouldn't you be on stronger grounds, though, if you refused to buy at those stores, and if you called upon the white people of the country uh, to follow you because of both your moral and your legal right not to buy? I think, Mr. Spivak, sometimes it is necessary to dramatize an issue because many people are not aware of what's happening. And I think the sit-ins serve to dramatize the indignities and the injustices which uh, Negro people are facing all over the nation. And I think another reason why they are necessary and they are vitally important at this point is the fact that they give an eternal refutation to the idea that the Negro is satisfied with segregation. If you didn't have the sit-ins, you wouldn't have this dramatic, and uh, not only this dramatic, but this mass demonstration of the dissatisfaction of the Negro with the whole system of segregation. Mr. Lewis. <clears throat> you just had a strategy meeting in Raleigh, North Carolina, Dr. King, on this whole question. And I noticed that one speaker uh, was quite critical of the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People, speaking of it as too conservative and too slow moving. Uh, do you share that view? And uh, just what was the feeling at the strategy meeting? What was the conclusion, that you've got to move more quickly than you have been? Well, I should say first that I didn't uh, hear a speaker say make that particular point so that I can't uh, uh, speak on, on that whether the speaker said it or whether he didn't say it. I heard all of the speakers and I didn't hear that. I didn't find any anti-NAACP attitude at the strategy meeting. All of the leaders from the South, the Southern sit-in movement, assembled there. And uh, they assembled there with the awareness of the fact that the NAACP has given absolute support to the sit-ins. And uh, the NAACP has made it very clear 
that this is a good movement, a positive movement that it will support throughout. Uh, now, there was some criticism, not of the NAACP, but of the snail-like pace of the implementation process, uh, the implementation of the Supreme Court's decision, and dissatisfaction with the conniving methods and evasive schemes used to avoid uh, following the law of the land. This isn't a criticism of the NAACP, it's a criticism of the agencies and, and the courts that will use the law uh, to delay and get it bogged down in complex litigation processes. Mrs. Craig. Uh, Dr. King, I have been told that there are places in Harlem which refuse to serve white customers. Do you know if that's true? If so, do you justify it? Is he either morally or legally right? I'm very sorry I didn't get the first part of it. I question. say I understand there are places in Harlem in New York where they, uh, they don't, will not serve white customers. Do you know whether that's true or not? I'm very sorry I do not, Mrs. Craig. I, I have been so told. I don't know of places in Harlem that will not serve white customers. If such places exist, I think it's a blatant injustice and uh, just uh, redevelopment of the thing we're trying to get rid of. So I certainly wouldn't go along with that. Mr. Vander Linden. Dr. King, uh, how many white people are members of your church in Atlanta? I don't have any white members, Mr. Vander Linden. Well, sir, you said integration is the law of the land and it's uh, morally right, whereas segregation is morally wrong and the president should do something about it. You mean the president should issue an order that the schools and the churches and the stores should all be integrated? I think it is one of the tragedies of our nation, one of the shameful tragedies, that 11 o'clock on Sunday morning is one of the most segregated hours, if not the most segregated hours in Christian America. Uh, I definitely think the Christian church should be integrated and any church that uh, stands against integration and that has a segregated body is standing against the spirit and the teachings of Jesus Christ and it fails to be a true witness. Uh, but this is something that the church will have to do itself. I don't think church integration will come through uh, legal processes. I might say that my church is not a segregating church. It's segregated, but not segregating. It would welcome white members. I think at this point I'll have to interrupt. I see that our time is up. Thank you very much, Dr. King, for being with us.